The Young Monsters team still out on the pitch, uh, completing their warm up and preparation with just five minutes to kick off in this All Ireland League Bateman Cup final between Young Munster and the home side. Terran Yor here at Lakelands in Dublin. Terran Yor have made their way back into the dressing room to finish their preparations. The teams we will go through very quickly, starting with the home team. Terran Yor College RFC will line out with a front row of Campbell Classen, Levi Vaughan, and Adam Chute. Their second row is Harrison Brewer, who captains the side alongside Matthew Caffrey. And the back row, Adam Melia. James White and Jordan Coughlin complete a very strong back row for the home side and current Bateman Cup holders. Alan Penny is at scrum half with Callum Smith at out half. The centres are Peter Sylvester and Colin de Butler. And the winger, Connor Phillips, former Young Munster man. And the other winger is Adam Legru with Aaron Egan at full back. Young Munster have David Begley, Stephen McLaughlin and Keenan Knox in the front row. The engine room is Tom Goggin and Sean Rigney. Back row is captain Alan Kennedy alongside Finton Coleman and Ruan Quinn. Jack Lyons starting at scrum half and Miami bound Shane O'Leary will be at 10. In the centre, Keegan Christian Goss partners Harry Fleming. The wingers are Shane McCarthy and Oshin Pepper and Aidan Shorthall having an outstanding season for the team in black and amber will be the full back. To look at the benches, Terran Yor have Tom Stewart, Conan O'Donnell, Connor McCormack as replacement front rows. Mike Murphy, Tom Coughlin, Stephen O'Neill, Caelan Dooley, and Craig Adams also filling out the bench. Chris Moore, Harrison Allen, and Connor Bartley are the replacement front rows for Young Munster, alongside John Foley, Dunico Callahan, Key and Casey, James O'Brien, and James Horrigan. Looking at those two teams, do you see either team having an edge, Neil? I don't. It's, it's two very, very evenly matched teams, Dan. I think, as, as we said earlier on, you look at the, the Young Munster side, and there's a lot of there's a lot of beef in that pack and there's a couple of you know monster contracted players in there the likes of Keenan Knox and, and Ruan Quinn who I'm really really looking forward to seeing as well but also just then like the the old stalwarts the likes of an Alan Kennedy at, at, at captain as well and they have quality in the back line as well that I think maybe you might sometimes forget when you're talking about young monsters because you always just associate them with being such a, a hard forward physical team I mean Shane O'Leary is an experienced operator at number 10 as well there is and the likes of Shea, uh, Shea McCarthy as well who's, who's been released by Munster and has looked quite good in the few games he's had with them so far this season. On the Terranure side, it's quite a settled pack. You look at that front row, Campbell Class and Levi Vaughan and Adam Chuse, they're pretty much locked into those one, two, three spots nearly week on week. And uh, you know, they're all All-Ireland League winners as well as the teams come out. What I am looking forward to seeing though in the Terranure pack is Jim White at open side flanker. It's a debut for him. Missed all of, uh, all of the season so far. He's a new signing having uh, finished up at schools with St. Michael's last year. Luke Claus, he is away. So he's given a debut here. The sun is is going to be at their backs. It's more of an issue for Levi Vaughan throwing in, and we saw him, we saw them cough up the first line of the day. This time round, they make it stick. Levi Vaughan to the front, and Terran Yor go to the backs, and it's through the hands, and really little offload. And Phillips steps this way and steps that. It's Connor Phillips has stepped back inside, broken through the tackle of Shane O'Leary, gets all the way to the line and touches it down for the opening score of the game. Connor Phillips, quick feet. The opening try scored for Terran Yor against his former club. And that's what he is capable of doing with ball in hand. Looking up, heads up rugby and Phillips breaks through to open the scoring for Terran Yor College RFC. Yeah, it had to be Connor Phillips. He'll have enjoyed that one. He looks in a little bit of pain. having a, I think he landed awkwardly going in there. He's holding his shoulder. But that was a brilliant, brilliant try. That was a lovely strike move. Uh, got the clean ball off the top at the line out managed to work it into midfield and I think Phillips just managed to get around the get around the side of one of the young Munsters defenders someone fell as well as they were covering back as well and that just opened up a little bit of space and from there we know Connor Phillips former sevens player he has the speed to get through and it's set uh, it's set tearing you up with a with a nice lead to start this off after just a few minutes and Callum Smith about to kick the conversion not the start that young monster would have liked. The ideal start for the home side and current Bateman Cup holders. And get it out to Connor Phillips on that left wing. Well defended by young monsters, though, it has to be said. Shane O'Leary's penalty kick takes young monsters to the edge of the 22. That's a better line out for the Limerick outfit. Tom Goggin taking it off the top and setting up them all. Young monsters look to drive. To the back of it, Stephen McLaughlin goes and he breaks off the side and goes at Alan Penny. Eventually to ground. Young Munster's making some yards. David Begley on the carry. Terran Yor looked to interfere. Jack Lyons does well. Finton Coleman. 
Young Monsters moving it through the paces. Keenan Knox. Penalty advantage coming to Young Monsters as Alan Kennedy carries. Kennedy still upright. Strong carry from the Young Monster captain. O'Leary gets his hands on it and steps it outside. Short all. Looking for the offload. Nobody oh. home. To deck he goes and the referee says we'll come back. No advantage. Young Monster penalty. You would think a chance to put three points on the board. It is. Just settle themselves down. That was a really, really good attack though. It was a really sharp maul. Lovely and tight. And maybe in my question, did they break from it a little bit too early? I know uh, I know. Stephen, Stephen McLaughlin might have spotted just a half gap down that blind side. And he's been in great try scoring form this season. Six tries over the, the course of the, the first nine rounds of the AAL. Not quite Dylan Donnellan territory, but still pretty good going for, for six tries in nine games. But as we see there, yeah, Shane O'Leary wisely calling for the tee. And this should be uh, this should be an easy tap over for a player of his uh, abilities. I mentioned a couple of times in pre-match, he is Miami bound for the start of the Major League Rugby season. I have to ask, what does Miami have to offer that Lakelands doesn't on a nice January January afternoon like more, today? More important question. What does Miami have to offer that Tom Clifford Park doesn't? <laughs> I can't give you an answer there, Dan. I, I honestly can't. <laughs> this one just to the left-hand side of the post and should be straightforward for the Young Monster 10. And a chance to get the visitors off the mark. tit for tat a little bit in the early stages of this game both teams still settling into the contest it is and it's been quite enjoyable uh, this first 10 minutes uh, young monster they'll be having conceded that try early on and also picked up a couple of knocks along the way as well they'll just be pleased to get those points on the board and settle themselves in after after tearing your head look really really good uh, early on but as we've seen and as we said before the game at young monsters if they can get on top of you in terms of the penalty count That'll give them the opportunity to get down into your 22. And if you're giving them set pieces down in your own 22, that's where they can really, really punish it. Well taken off the top. And Terran Yor have ball again, yet again. Loads of possession and territory for the team in home. And Connor Phillips, hand to the Legru, and Legru looks to step outside. It's a really good covering tackle. Had to be. And Terran Yor can sense an opportunity. Peter Sylvest on the carry. Alan Benny to Callum Smith. Smith. Inside to Campbell Classen. Classen hit. And that one looked to be just above Sternham Height. Just above Sternham Height. And that is a high tackle. For those not familiar with the amateur game, Sternham Height is the point above which you can't tackle. Typically considered to be a high tackle if it's shoulder or above in the professional game. For those unfamiliar with the amateur game, Sternum height is as high as you can go. Yeah, that looks a fair call. It was just a little bit high, standing up in the tackle. There didn't look to be any any contact with heads or anything like that. So just a penalty only is the is the fair call. I do want to go back actually because between the from the turn your turnover and, and moving the ball out wide, we were probably talking about their attack. But that that maul that your monsters got off the line out probably about ten meters inside their own half and brought it probably to ten meters inside the turn your half. That was seriously impressive. Just metre by metre creeping their way up and it has Simon Malone's fingerprints all over it who knows Terran very well having coached them last season and has now moved back home to Limerick and uh, he'll be pleased with that one Callum Smith's long range penalty is a good one for the home side <coughs> coming the question then is whether or not Terran put jumpers up to try and interfere well they're down a forward as well obviously with Camel Classen in the bin and it looks as though that is going to be remedied. Conan O'Donnell coming Conan on. O'Donnell coming in. Former Connacht man and a former Toronto teammate of Shane O'Leary. And uh, it's decided that Alan Benny, the scrum half. Well, I thought it was Alan Benny coming out. It's actually Aaron Egan. It's taken off the top. This time from Rigney. And Young Monsters Mall starts to move. This time the mall defence from Terran Yor is good. But Young Monsters get it on second shove. And heading towards the line. And eventually Young Monsters get it on the ground. And the try is awarded. It's Rigney this time round. The man who took it off the top and got it on his hands on it on the second shove. And Young Monsters get their first try of the game. To take them back 
to within two points and a chance to level this match. Now we've got a game on. We certainly do, and that's been coming for a few minutes now. We've mentioned them all three or four times at this stage. Just broke down ever uh, slightly towards the blind side. It looked initially like Terranura had done a good job on it, but credit to Young Munsters. They knew what they were doing. They knew that they just broke off into, into their a little pot of three or four down into the blind side, isolate the Terranura defence. And as you mentioned, it was it was Sean Rigney who got the, the final touchdown. Deserved try. And if Shane O'Leary can add the extras, we're going to have a level ball game. By no means an easy kick, this one. To the right-hand side. I have to say, as we hit 30 minutes on the clock, Dan, this first half has absolutely flown by. It's been really, really enjoyable stuff. Highly entertaining game of rugby and the only show in town today. If you're interested in getting your rugby fix. O'Leary. To try to level this Bateman Cup final. Just over the half hour mark. Still about six minutes or so on the Sinbin clock. O'Leary's strike is not a good one. And the referees leave the uh, correction, the touch judges leave the flags down. And so the score remains. Terran, your 10, Young Monster, 80, stopped through the hands. Callum Smith, massive hit from Harry Fleming. And Terran, you're going backwards a little bit. Cochlin tries to carry out. Alan Benny to the hands. Young Monster's putting in the hits. And it's so Harrison Brewer, not one bit happy about a hit. This game in the last few minutes, Dan, it's it's always kicked off a little bit here or there when these sides have played each other other over over the last few years. And I think we had a we had the high tackle against Harrison Brewer there, and I think that's probably why he was so animated that time around. That one certainly was high. Um he certainly did come up over the up over the sternum. And about thirty seconds earlier, I know the crowd around us here at Lakelands, they weren't happy about another uh another tackle they thought was high as well. So I think that's just it's all gone into the same pot and it's given us a, a pretty a pretty boiling bowl of stew. A referee in discussion. The assistants today are Keen Davison and Chris Locke. A bit of a chat being had and it referee goes into his pocket. There's going to be a card coming here, I think. going to be a card. The discussion with Captain Alan Kennedy. What the colour of the card will be remains to be seen. Oh, and no. it is a red card. Young Monsters have Fintan Coleman sent off a red card and will play the rest of this game with 14 players. Great work by Matthew out. Caffrey. Just slowing Young Monsters up. To hands. Young Monsters still carrying, moving it through onto the ground. Jack Lyons marshalling the troops. And he's going to put his boot on this one. No, he doesn't. Back to O'Leary, and O'Leary heads out the back. Fleming. Shane O'Leary acting on the little pop up pass into the hands of Shane McCarthy. And the referee says that one's forward. Nice idea. And there we are, half time. And that is the last action of the half. Pulling off big second halves. Go back to the, the Bateman Cup semi-final up in Ballina Hinch when they pulled that one out away from home in Ballina Hinch as well and only just before Christmas against Cork Con as well. So a big 40 minutes to go to see where this trophy is going to be. Callum Smith returns the kickoff into the waiting arms and a lovely little dink over the top. Is the ball going to bounce? That it was bounces. A lovely kick. Unfortunately for Young Monsters, bounces happily for Terran York College. And into midfield they go, and Callum Smith through the hands. And the little grubber kick is going to bounce up for Shane Space O'Leary. Behind. And O'Leary returns the kick with some interest. It's going to bounce over the dead ball line. Is it going to bounce dead? Nope. It's going to sit in the in goal area. And eventually it is touched down by Aaron Egan. That's a January pitch for you, Dan. <laughs> I told you before this game. Beside the lake, this is generally a, a fairly soft pitch, and when 
when that ball took a first hop as it hit the ground off uh, of Shane O'Leary's kick, it looked like it was going to trickle the whole way down towards the clubhouse, but the ground, uh, the ground did its work for him. We'll give him the credit. He knew what way the bounce was going to be. He's an experienced kicker. The cookies can be from this kind of a situation in the first half. McLaughlin's throw is to Rigney, who takes it off the top and looks to get the Young Monsters Mall moving again. It's a little bit less organised than previous yeah. malls had been. And it looks as though Young Monsters will have a penalty advantage. And so it's a free play as they rumble towards the line. Alan Kennedy has to act as scrum half, picking and driving and heading towards the post. Still penalty advantage to the visiting team in front of the posts. Metres short as Tom Goggin carries. Lions for Begley. Two defenders waiting. That's good defensive effort from Levi Vaughan. Still penalty advantage. As Kennedy carries and heads towards the line. Still short. Young Munsters probing. Looking to get over the line. Just shy. Terran Ewer's defensive effort now needs to be huge. And their discipline needs to be good. McLaughlin steps this way and that. And gets it down surely. No. Still short. Just about. Kennedy at the back. Young Munsters know their job from here. They don't want to get held up over the line. No Little pick it. and go! And the try is scored! Young Munsters getting over and getting it on the ground. It's a huge effort. And Young Munsters have to score down the blind side. Pick and go. And the pure power to get it over the line. And touch that one down from Rowan Quinn. And Young Munsters have first blood early in the second half. A massive score for the visiting side. Down a player, 14 man Young Monsters take the lead in this game. Terran, your 10 Young Monsters, 13 with a conversion to come. And you could sense that they knew what their job was, got about the work and got the result. 100% Dan, uh, an excellently worked try and a, from a worrying point for point of view for Terran, your, it, it felt ominous as soon as, as soon as Young Monsters got that mall working through the 22. Penalty advantage came and from there Young Monsters knew all they had to do was work through their phases, stay sharp, stay connected, stay focused, and eventually, just inch by inch, yard by yard, forced their way over, and it was a lovely little kind of coming back against the grain from Rio and Quinn, back in under those posts again. Easy conversion for, uh, for Shane O'Leary. The five-metre line out then. Levi Vaughan to the front. Caffrey and back into Vaughan and into the hands of Harrison Brewer. Brewer heading towards the line. Alan Benny has it at the base. It's forward play now. And staying tight. They have the man advantage. Caffrey on the carry. No gain there. Jordan Coughlin this time. Losing a yard or so. Good defence from the visiting team. Levi Vaughan. Stood up by Keegan Christian Goss. But it's surely there. A big, big tackle. Terran Yor have numbers and through the hands it goes. Jordan Coughlin gets his hands on it and Terran Yor get the try. The numbers counting as Terran Yor narrow the young monster defence and Jordan Coughlin with the heavy strapping on that right foot gets all the way over for the Terran Yor score. Now we've got a great game on our hands, Dan, and that was excellently worked in fairness. It looked like young monsters had kind of got the edge of them, drove them back half a, a couple of yards and Colm de Butler was hit with a massive tackle, did so well to just get the ball back into the hands of Adam Melia. He flicked it out to, I think it might have been Harrison Brewer. He gave it out to Jordan Coughlin. And Jordan Coughlin's a hard man to stop from, from that range. Levels this up and gives Callum Smith the opportunity to put Terenure back into the lead. Um, we mentioned Young Munster's been on top for probably that, the middle third of this game so far. But it might be a little bit of a worry that this is pretty much the, the second, maybe third decent Terranure attack, and they've got over for a try on two occasions. Well, it's going to stay a level game. Conversion is hooked unexpectedly, somewhat, considering his ability off the tee. And so we stay level at 15 points apiece. <laughs> this game is shaping up to be nervy and more than a little bit exciting. We've got a big 28 minutes ahead of us here, Dan. Levi Vaughan will have to put in to the Terran Your line out at the edge of the Young Monster 22. 15 all the score. To the tail. 
well taken off the top and Alan Benny throws it into midfield and Sylvester back on his feet is brought to ground. Alan Benny to Jordan Coughlin, Coughlin popping it up into the hands of Aaron Egan and Aaron Egan will score for Terenure under the posts. The gaps are there for Terenure to exploit and they know how to do it. And the pop-up pass from Coughlin to Egan was outstanding. And Aaron Egan runs in Terenure score, which will surely have extras added. And a seven-point lead for the home team. Just out of nothing, what they are capable of when they move that ball, Neil Tracy. They are. When they get into their phase play and they start working around the pitch, they're, they're so, so difficult to stop because the, the skill, player right, skill level right around from numbers one through to number 23 are so good that it doesn't matter who's out there, they can keep moving the ball around and... In the end, it was just Aaron Egan, hit the line hard, came through the gap and sprinted right up through the guts of the pitch, or the guts of the 22, to give to give Callum Smith a simple tap over. And Terran, you are now moving into a seven-point lead with 22 minutes to go. The gap, 22 points to 15. They need seven. With the clock running out. Line out is sloppy but collected from Young Monsters and Donico Gallahan looks to go on a little run. A little big carry now as Young Monsters try to edge forward. O'Callaghan through the hands. Tom Goggin onto the deck he goes. Alan Kennedy hands it off to Foley and Foley looking to breach. Gets up to five metres out. Donico Callahan looking left and looking right. Decides to go to the left and Kennedy's there yet again. Ball is loose. Young Monsters have Christian Keegan Goss towards the line and short. Foley on the carry. John Foley heading towards the line. Harry Fleming stepping this way and that. And he's short. To the hands of Goggin. Tom Goggin. Short again. Donegal Callahan screaming at his backs to get around and get out. Young Monsters are short, urged on by their fans. O'Callaghan into the hands and Young Monsters get it on the ground. Referee's checking oh. and he says held up. The referee says held up over the line. Huge defensive effort from Terran Yore. And Christian Keegan Goss. Keegan Christian Goss can't get it on the ground. Held up over the line. Terra Newer will be delighted with that defensive effort. Oh, it's razor edge stuff here, Dan. I think is is it Harrison Brewer who's down injured there at the moment. But what a defensive effort from... I saw Levi Vaughan getting up with the ball. Jordan Coughlin was in there as well. Mike Murphy was making a nuisance of himself. Even Craig Adams is in there. Someone is getting their hands in under that ball. We certainly can't see it from this replay in front of us. But we're into these last five, six minutes now. And as I said, it's razor wire stuff. Terran will run down the clock. One out carries at the halfway line. Slow ball. Good game management from the home side. Oh, it's spill forward, and spill it's forward. Knocked on and young Munsters have. This is what they needed. Foley stepping back into traffic. He goes. To the deck. Shane O'Leary. Massive defensive line speed. And Levi Vaughan makes the tackle. Young Monsters are in their own half. They need to be at the other end of the pitch. But they have hands on the ball. Tom Goggin on the carry. Makes half a yard or so. Terran, you need to start leaving that ball alone on the ground. The one thing they don't want to do is give Young Munsters a penalty and an opportunity to get down into the 22. If Young Munsters are, are going to get there, Terran, you have to make them get there on their own terms. Short haul. To the deck he goes. And, and there's Munsters a penalty. Get the penalty. Slow to move away was the replacement front row, Conan O'Donnell. And Young Munsters will put this one presumably into touch as much as O'Leary can get out of this and it's between the 10 and the 22 still some distance to go to that try line what a finish we have coming up here Dan two minutes left on our clock 
Rangers lead by seven points. Oh, it's a crooked throw. And it sounded for all the world as if the hometown made that decision. And the referee That's it. blows the whistle and signals the end of the game here at Lakelands as Terenure College or FC retain the Bateman Cup. 2023 winners are now the 2024 winners in Dublin by a score of 22 points to 15. Massive effort from both sides. Huge work rate. Some great pieces of rugby. Terra Neur showing that they can score from anywhere. Young Monsters working so hard, but alas, not hard enough. And the victory goes to the home side and reigning Bateman Cup champion. Sum that game up for us, Neil. Oh, what a fantastic 80 minutes, Dan. That was thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. I know maybe I'll be getting a bit excited coming from the the, the purple, black and white side of things in the in the commentary box today. But just all around, I think it was a fantastic game. Uh, I know we had a red card in the first half. Thankfully, the contest wasn't spoiled because of it. This went right down to the wire. It was two teams that uh, haven't always liked each other, but played a brilliant, brilliant sporting game. Congratulations to, to Sean Ski and Andy Ski and, and Connor Gildee on the coaching team. Congratulations to all those players as well. I just want to tell everyone, put it in your diary, 10th of February, back up here at Lakelands in the in a few rounds' time of the All-Ireland League. It's going to be an absolute cracker all over again. But look, congratulations to both teams. It was a brilliant, brilliant 80 minutes. And uh, Terenure are the champions.